Uh, today I would like to talk a little bit about uh, universities and the subjects that are being taught there that are obligatory for students to go through to gain their diplomas um, and to then theoretically become a master or a bachelor of uh, their um, their degree. And uh, because universities are of course a big proud institution with a long history, amazing teachers have been teaching there for maybe hundreds of years, a lot of experience and uh, knowledge and talent has gone through those walls uh, at the university and um, there is a lot of, you know, yeah, pride in all the knowledge that has been stored or made there. Uh, however, a lot of that is unfortunately a little bit out of date. The world is moving on. There are many new uh, situations that young musicians need to go through today that maybe are not being taught in those subjects anymore. This does not mean that those subjects are bad in any way, uh, but a little refresh on them somehow uh, would benefit the students more. And actually, some completely different subjects would also maybe benefit the student a little bit more today in the modern world. Um, before uh, I present these 10 ideas of subjects um, that I myself have just been thinking about now after having been a university student myself for 10 years, I have done my bachelor's and master's, in, in total three different countries, um, then I know that this is not just the case of one institution. This is something more global. I think it's more or less everywhere the same. Um, and I would also like to say that some of the things that in my opinion should be a subject, I have been fortunate to learn uh, at the university, but only thanks to pure goodwill from some of my own teachers. Uh, however, Despite this is nice from them to teach on pure goodwill, it is not a requirement from the university for you to learn these things. You will not get your diploma by either knowing or not knowing these things. However, they will help you to get a job. And of course, the university is interested in graduating people, giving them a nice diploma with a nice stamp and signature from the principal, of course. But in my opinion, maybe even more important is then to graduate someone who has the chance to get a job in today's world, in today's society. So therefore, I would like to now present the 10 subjects to you that in my opinion would benefit uh, orchestra, future orchestra musicians today. First subject is how to practice. Because this is very, very important to be able to maybe make a practice schedule for yourself uh, to find out how to practice, what kind of difficulties do you have, what you need to focus most on. Are you maybe good at one thing, leave that aside a little bit, focus on something different. It's not only about you know learning uh, a new piece every week uh, instrumentally. There are so many other challenges that can just be worked on uh, separately to take out the details of the music, work on that separately, and then um, together you would learn uh, tons of different pieces at the same time, basically just by working on small things. So that is very important. First subject: how to practice. Subject number two, the study of instrument makers. Uh, this subject is something that would be benefit, beneficial for students because then you would actually learn what the differences are, what sound qualities are different, what kind of key mechanics are different, the bore of the instrument, uh, the history of the manufacturers, who are old, who are new, what is popular, what is not. It would also be uh, relevant for the students when they apply for auditions and they would then know in advance, for example, okay, in this orchestra, everyone are playing on, let's say, Fox. Uh, and this other orchestra, everyone is playing on Heckel. Um, those things are good to know if you, as a young musician, apply for a ton of auditions and you basically show up with the wrong instrument and your sound is then suddenly not attractive because they're aiming for someone who would blend in with their group, which makes total sense. Uh, stuff like this is worth to know. So the study of instrument makers, I think, is something that could benefit uh, young musicians. Subject number three, I would say, is instrumental care. How to care for your instrument, how to treat it, how to take off a key, how to oil a key, how to change a pad under a key, uh, how to make sure that your instrument is in general good condition so you don't need to send it for an overhaul every second year, uh, what to do, what not to do with your instrument, how to hold it, how to, you know, how to treat it properly, and, and how to fix it sometimes. Of course, maybe not the very big repair, but the small things, because very many times 
or at least sometimes this can save you before a very important concert one day. If you just know how to take off a key or to repair a little spring or uh, change a pad, that can make a big difference one day when you don't have a professional repairman nearby. Subject four, instrumental acoustics. Uh, basically learning how your instrument works, how your ear is um, affecting the sound of the notes, how it uh, basically jumps back and forth inside the bore, um, what kind of reeds and vocal would be the smartest for you to have on your bassoon to make it resonate fully, uh, how to scrape the reeds accordingly, um, because very many times today we just learn uh, which reeds to buy and uh, which vocal to buy, but we don't really know why exactly. So I think it's more important for the student to learn what to listen for and to see that also maybe, you know, at academically on a paper, after having done research in the subject, uh, what to search for, not just given a, a manufacturer or a reed maker's name uh, to really know what to search for. So instrumental analytics could be useful. Subject number five would be orchestral excerpt class. Um, so not only uh, learning your own excerpt in an uh, isolated practice room to know how to play a little melody, but also actually learning how to read the score, what to search for, which instruments are you playing with, what are typical rubatos here that you can be taught by either listening to recordings or from an experienced teacher who has played all of this stuff in advance, uh, especially maybe if you're learning opera literature, knowing that one sixteen note can certainly last 10 seconds. Uh, if it's a high note in Puccini, for example, it can last forever. Stuff like this is worth to know, uh, because then if you come on the audition and you play the 16 note as like palm, you know, the, it shows you didn't do research on this field, basically. So many times the music that is written down in a certain way is not meant to be played as it's written down. Uh, which is one of many things that could be discovered in the orchestral excerpts class. Subject number six is um, uh, job applications and actually how to apply for a job. How to find out where to search uh, for job applications or uh, you know, uh, how to submit your CV, how to write a CV, how to write an application, how to write a motivation letter, and which pages to look at. I mean, we have pages of the, um, musical chairs, the video world, uh, move arc, audition cafe, and many more. These are things that when I started my studies, I had no clue they even existed. Uh, this is maybe worth to know. So a subject like this, I think, would benefit also the students a lot. Also, for example, knowing if you want to apply uh, in a foreign country, then very many times if you write your CV and your application in the language of the uh, orchestra, so let's say you apply to Germany, you write it in German, your chances for getting invited has already been increased. Stuff like this is also worth to know. So a subject like this could be useful. Subject number seven, audition techniques. Being taught by someone who successfully have done a good audition and uh, learning some techniques on what to do and what not to do. Uh, for example, some hacks also, like if there is a screen on the audition, um, it's good to know, for example, some techniques there. Uh, if the jury is asking you to play even softer than what you are actually able to do, there are some hacks you can do there. For example, if no one can see you and there is a screen, you can, for example, turn yourself 180 degrees. Your sound is projecting the wrong way, so you will automatically sound softer. Or you can step closer to the screen, and this way the screen will kill a lot of your sound as well. So there are very many ways to, to manipulate a little bit of what is going on on the auditions. So some audition techniques could be useful. Yeah, I might as well share another one here right now. If you don't have uh, a chance to uh, play in the concert hall that you're auditioning in before the audition finds place, you have no clue about how the acoustics are. Then, for example, when you tune, play your tune, tuning A as you normally would, and then in the very end, maybe also play a short A. This short A is something the jury don't even mind uh, why you played a short A, but for you it's very important because then you check automatically the acoustics in the hall. If you have tons of acoustics, you will know that some of the fast excerpts will sound better at a little bit slower tempo. Stuff like this, worth to know. Next subject would be tone blending and orchestral intonation. For example, if you happen to play Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony for the first time with a professional orchestra, and um, then it's quite beneficial for you to know that, okay, what happens in the start? A contrabass just goes boom. And basses are normally generally flat in the lower register in comparison to the bassoon, which happens to be sharp. Uh, so this intonation uh, difficulty is worth to know, especially if you step in like just on dress rehearsal or straight on concert, and you have never played this stuff before. If you would have that knowledge in advance, then it could save you uh, a little embarrassing moment in the orchestra.
and similar situations. A next subject that will be very useful is orchestral behavior. What to do, what not to do, both on and off the stage, especially when you're during uh, a trial, for example. It can really save you a lot sometimes just how you behave and what you say to certain people. Uh, orchestral behavior, absolutely essential. And last but not least, orchestral traditions. Learning the different traditions that the different orchestras have. Some orchestras out there, big and famous, like for example, Berliner Philharmoniker has tons of uh, recordings available online for you to listen to, so you can know how they play certain things. However, there are also much smaller orchestras out there that maybe don't have so much recordings available, but they still have a very proud and uh, strong tradition, which is something that we should learn more about. Um, this would both be beneficial for the applicants who are doing auditions, because then they would know how to perform for that orchestra for them to like them more. And also it's uh, interesting for the orchestra, them, for the musicians there themselves, then you would get more applicants who actually play in the same kind of style and are interested in the same kind of musical uh, tradition as they already have. So after having said all this, then, uh, like I said again, it is often difficult to present new ideas like this without uh, stepping on someone's feet. So I hope that no one uh, felt strange or like um, stepped on somehow because I mentioned uh, some ideas that maybe some of my own teachers have already worked a little bit on, but these are things that are not required by any university for you to learn. It doesn't say on your diploma, ah, you just learned how to play that song. Uh, even though that would be more useful for you as a bassoonist at least than to having like, okay, you know how to compose a 12-tone fugue. Uh, you know, uh, I think it's important to mention these things because um, if no one does, then the same subject will just continue forever. And uh, I think it's time we maybe update uh, some of the system here. So I'm very thankful for that you are listening in on some thoughts of this. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you either agree or disagree, both are interesting to, um, aspects to hear. Uh, maybe more interesting is if you disagree, why do you disagree and what other ideas would you think would be good ideas of subjects that can be taught in universities. Thanks a lot for listening. See you soon.